Bootleg Kev Show. Special guest in here, Mount Westmore. Yeah, yeah. Cube, sure. Three quarters of Mount Westmore. Three quarter. We're missing Snoop Dogg. We're missing Snoopy Dogg. Somewhere we're mining Snoop crypto. Doggy dog. <laughs> <laughs> we're missing Snoopy. You were missing Snoopy. <laughs> we're missing Snoop. Uh, hey, well, look, I'm so glad that this album is actually here because, uh, you know, it felt like one of these like mis- m- methodical albums that we always hear about and then it never ends up coming out. Yeah. Uh, How hard was it to get everybody to like, you know, the this one paper? coming out? This ain't none of that. This is this is for real, for real, for real, for real. I was hoping it wasn't like it detox two point oh. It was a timing thing, man. Like we we had many opportunities to pull the trigger, but it was like, should we? Right. And we discussed it as like you know, for intelligent minds, you know, powwow, and then we like, what's that date? That date could have been October twenty twenty. You could have dropped the album. We could have dropped it all of last year, anytime earlier this year. And we just we just felt like let's do some things like. Get all the merch together. Get all the ducks in a row. Get you know, get, go out and, get the- and we did an NFT play, mm. which um, um, you know, once we put it out on the NFT, um, we had to wait a certain amount of time before we can actually put a different record out on the street. This is a different record than than the NFT. Uh, some of the songs are the same, but a few. Most of these are new. Well, awesome. How how lucrative is the NFT play? Is that I mean, because a lot of artists are going that direction. I mean, Snoop pulled Doggy Style and all the Death Row stuff off of DSPs. Like, you know, it's a thing where it was great for us um, because we, you know, got a great deal. Uh, but you know, the NFT market, the whole crypto market, has been like going backwards ever since like Mother's Day. So, yeah, it's been bad. Yeah. So it just was. Not great timing mm. for the group, but it was lucrative for the group. So, you know, in a lot of ways it worked. In a lot of ways, if we did it when it was a bull market instead of a bear market, then it would have uh, did a lot better. Right. You know, uh, we always plan to make sure it hit the street, though. Uh, you know, that was a that was a you know one of our demands that yeah we can do this NFT play, but at some point. This music got to hit all platforms, you know, CDs. We making albums. We doing everything you can do um, to get this to the streets. And December 9th is the date. Yeah, Friday. Um, I'm curious, man, because you guys all have very uh, unique journeys. Obviously, both of y'all were on Jive for a very long time. Um, Cube, you've been a major label artist. You've gone independent. Nowadays, it feels like the transparency of record deals is higher people are talking about it more in terms of like some of these shitty deals that are getting offered art meek mills talked about it a lot recently um what is your guys's like uh thoughts on just like where the game is and like artists becoming a lot more self-aware on some of the deals they're signing because i'm assuming like everybody's probably signed a deal that they're not the craziest about you know what i mean and you guys have seen all sides of the game whether it's doing the independent shit doing the major label shit well you know um my westmore we're doing it like one at a time so uh, we're not really like uh, getting buried up under contracts or anything, anything like that. We we definitely um, the group has definitely grossed quite a bit of money before any anything ever dropped. Well, the tour's been going. You guys, yeah, been a lot of tour dates. Show, shows we did really good on merch. We did um, really good with uh, you know some early stuff we did. Like we appeared at the Triller event when Jake. Paul I remember fought. that. that yeah, was, that was a big payday, and you know we just kind of was that like, the same fight. Um, Nate Robinson took took the uh, no. no no it was the one after right it was one before he took the he took the L before that fight I believe I can't remember but it was it was yeah yeah and no, I remember that it was, was in, it was in Atlanta now, you guys have been building this for I mean Big subwoofer has been out over a year so it's yeah like, so it's it's like a it's like a business play man everything is thought out in advance when we gonna drop the album when's the next album coming what are the visuals gonna do like you know what's the next money play it's it's more like a business and I think that um I think that this market right now for a young artist they don't have to just go sign to a major label and get buried in, or do a 360 deal they could really like go do deals with different platforms and different type of spaces where the music could live it's so much it's so many different places that a song or an album a project can go right now so you know you got to just factor all that in and not just do that old conventional one street you know like get it to the physical you, you can't do that like you got to do a lot of stuff so i think um 
it's a good time to like, uh, you know, we got good leverage on this being as that is Snoop and Cube and 40 is short and we OGs and we solid. We don't have, we didn't have to go in there and they're like, well, I'll give you a deal, but you got to sign on for like seven albums. Mm -hmm. Like we, it wasn't that with us. What would you, Cube, what would you uh, advise like a younger artist who's maybe got like a, like a solid local buzz? They get, you, would you, would you, you know, give them advice to explore the major label route or, or try to stay as independent as long as possible? Stay as independent as long as possible, as long as you can. You know, when you do your music without a record label, you own 100% of it. And once you sign with a record label, you you basically giving them a, a percentage of your work. So if you have the, the discipline and the resources to be an independent artist, then you should do it. A lot of guys are, and I'll let 40 speak on it, but a lot of guys are, um, you know, they signed 360 deals. And mm -hmm. that's like one of the worst deals ever invented in man. So uh, some of them start, you know, you get real educated on deals once you sign a bad one because you realize why why the money is not making it to me. Yeah, well, I haven't uh, gotten any royalty checks. It's almost yeah. like the last check you ever see is the advance, and yeah, then it's over. so they they start to, you know, nothing will teach you more about the music business than signing a bad deal and you figuring out why it's bad. And, right. And then you become an expert, and uh, I'll kick it over to 40 to, to you know, give a few comments on it. Well, nowadays, you know, um, the new... Uh, era the new generation has it pretty damn good and i'm happy for them mm. and they smart a lot of these youngsters are smart they don't have to sign with a major a major will give you a good if you like i can't i can't really put a age group on am i talking to the mic yeah. i can't put put an age on it but just say you just say you 18 or 19 and you sign a deal for three years and that label blow you up it might be it might be good for you. It might be. Like they put a, they put the whole house behind you. That might be cool. Right. Because that's what you need. Because you don't have the, the the funding for it. Um the financials for it. You don't have you don't have it. So you 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 know, you let you let them, you know, do what they need to do with you. Um be smarter and make sure that um, you know, you negotiate your masters and all that stuff. Mm. You know, how quick you get them back and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that can be a, that can be an advantage for you um, if you're really young, you know, what I mean, and because because then once you get off that label, then you got the you di got the distro the, kids yeah. of the world and and just distribution deals, you right. know, ninety ten and you know what I'm the saying empires, those types of the foundations, yeah, that like, kind yeah. of stuff, you know, and that way you can control your own destiny and you're getting all the gouda, you understand me? Um, you keep your masters, right? You, you keep your masters. Be careful, yeah, because it could go the other way too. Some people sign you and they don't do shit. Yeah. And you go out there and do all the work and they get paid. You Off go your blow back. yourself up. Right. Mm -hmm. And now they then they come out the woods. Right. And and want 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 they cut. And you feel like, man, y'all didn't do nothing. But so you gotta just be careful. You gotta really know who you getting in business with and and not just be happy to be signed. Yeah. But understand that this is a business. It's a lot of a lot of mines, a lot of landmines in the major industry, mm. in the major label industry. With uh, you come in that door with those smiles and those meetings, and the they bring out the whole staff, and it's like catering, and they love you, and they sign yeah, you, yeah. And, the, and the check is big, and you happy, you celebrating, and the product comes out, and it does whatever. But somewhere. You know, when I say landmines, uh -oh. you, you can't really get mad at the right person. Right. Like you call up there yelling and screaming, they're going to shelf you. You go up there acting the ass, they're going to shelf you. You sit there and your next single come out on your second album and it's stellar, they're going to shelf you. And it's like you're still a really good artist and you get a lot of really good artists lost in that major label sauce. So if you go there, know what you're doing. If you stay independent, you're in charge of what you're you doing. In, so. You stay independent, you know, that's another thing. That's an advantage I had over many people that started off on major labels. I was independent for many moons. I was independent six years before I even, you know, I didn't sign my major distribution deal into right. into uh, 1994 with Jive. I, I, I came in the game in 1988 independent. So it was six years I had to, you know, to, to I, I went to college to learn. When right. I say college, I'm talking about just 
music industry college, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> unwillingly, you know what I'm saying? So I just went because I had to learn. I was in it by force, not by choice. So then when I signed my distribution deal, it was great because I, I, I already had the demand, you know what I'm saying? I knew what I wanted, and it was great. So I'm, I'm independent still right now. Um, I control my own destiny. But my whole thing is, is this. Nowadays, you could do what the majors do as a as an independent young artist. You, all you got to do is hire indies, and you can hire indie radio people. Yep. You know, it's, it's all kind of stuff you can do, and it's really up to you. You can you yeah. can promote yourself. It's like an a la carte menu. Your of social like media is there. Want. Content, yeah, sure. all that. Work your content yeah. on the social media is the biggest platform. Well, you're direct to consumer now. Exactly. You're Before direct you to needed consumer. a deal to get into the record store. Now you're locked and... in. You don't have to press up hard CDs right. and all that stuff. You just you could we can go in there right right now. I'm make a song right now, today, right now. Put the beat up, make a slap, had a shit on iTunes in 24 hours. So you guys you have me? obviously done a <laughs> joint project together. Uh-huh. Cube, you're part of, I mean, we're talking about groups. I mean, Westside Connection, NWA. Westside Connection to me was like the first like super group. I mean, NWA, st- y'all started together, so I don't yeah. consider like y'all pulling together. Yeah. But Westside Connection was a super group for real. Mm-hmm. Um, what is for you being a part of of these group situations or these group albums that are, are historical, what is the process like now with Mount Westmore? How different is it? I mean, I've been with groups, but nobody's been as big as the group I'm in now. Of course. Like, you know, these guys are platinum selling artists that's been in the game over 30 years, some 35. Um, and they're superstars. And so, you know, with NWA, we were all starting together. Nobody was a superstar. Um, Mount Westmore, I mean, Mount, I mean, Westside uh, Connection. Westside Connection. We were all kind of in the same clique, and it all made sense. Here, uh, these are guys that uh, were friends, and it started with a friendship and respect. And 30 years of admiring each other and to get in a group with those guys, like, I feel like um, I can rely on them, you know, more than than I even relied in NWA. You know, it was a lot of, you know, Dre's the, the shit now, but right. back then it was, it was arguing, yeah. you know, we was, we was trying to get it right. We've seen the movie. Yeah, so, <laughs> so uh, you know, it's uh, it's been great. To just relax and not have to, you know, spearhead everything and be the the front thinker or the the one coming up with all the ideas or this or that. You know, not saying that I had to do it with those other groups, but I trust these guys more than I trusted the other guys right, because right, right. we were kind of in the trenches together. Except for maybe Dub C, who's obviously still comes out on stage I mean, with you Dub, every show. Like, <laughs> is you know we we grew up in the same neighborhood i love so we, we grew up rapping against each other we grew up playing football against each other the best crib walker Friends. of all time yeah you know uh <laughs> dub is is amazing um you know but you know he you know he's a he's an artist that i'm friends with from from childhood these are artists that i grew up buying their records, you know. Mm-hmm. Dub, I help him put together some of his records. Yeah. So it's a difference. Uh, I'm a fan of these guys. And uh, I wasn't necessarily just a fan of, of those guys. I was friends, and I like what they do. So it's different, and it's easier mm. to be with superstars than than just guys that you just put a group together with. What up, y'all? We got to stop the interview real quick. Tell you about our partners at MyBookie, man. Look, it's so much to gamble on right now. We got World Cup soccer. We got bowl games coming up, NBA basketball. Uh, Of course, NFL, man. We're getting into the playoffs in a few weeks. Well, in like six weeks or something like that. Uh, With that being said, let's win some money. All right? Go to MyBookie right now. Sign up with that promo code BOOTLEG, and they will match your deposit up to $1,000. That's free money to gamble with. That's free money. What are we talking about? My bookie. Uh, let's talk about the props. You could bet on all kinds of player props. NBA points. Uh, well, Giannis win the MVP. You could do futures uh, on the award season for the NBA. Uh, so much going on. You could also still bet on the NFL MVP odds as well. There's just so much ways to get money on my bookie. But what's most important is that they're giving you free money. 
You sign up at MyBookie right now. You use the promo code BOOTLEG, and they will match your first deposit up to $1,000. That's right. Free money. What are we doing? Head over there, put in some bets, and let's try to win some fucking money together, all right? My bookie, use the promo code bootleg. Let's get back to the interview. Can you guys speak to like, there's always like a untold like rivalry between Northern California and Southern California, and I'm we not- keep sh- hearing about that? I never heard of one ever in my life. You keep being asked ever. about that, yeah. Like out of my 35 years in hip hop, music, putting music on the shelf, I have never. Now, if you want to talk about BR before that, before rap, mm-hmm. for our streets, I don't think it was a rival. It was just the game. It's the streets. It's a, it's a little, you know what I mean? It's There's a little funk going on in prisons and I would stuff say like that. Shit like that. But not, not hip hop. It's never yeah. been in hip hop. Yeah. Not hip hop. It's always been supportive. I think, uh, I think we admire each other for what we don't do. Mm. You know, uh, the energy, the the flavor, um, that that Northern California Bay Area artists bring is something different, new, fresh. Uh, I'm always looking forward to seeing what it is, mm-hmm. uh, and it's different than, than the Southern California flavor, and um, and I think vice versa. You know, um, they hear stuff from from down here that they like. Oh, damn! They on they on a whole new new page you know we we so similar but we we different it's like cousins you know right. you y'all blood related but your household is a little different than your cousin's household i do feel like the bay is like the i mean the most underratedly influential region in all of rap if you just yes. think of like I mean, the bay, we, we, we got that, sonically um, slang i mean you know i think of like Guys like the pack, how yeah. they influenced the whole generation like 12, 10 or 12 years ago like obviously 40 short you guys are you know on the Mount Westmore for sure. Um, obviously, the the uh, the record with Pilo on it, very Bay Area. Uh, I feel like I'm like who's kind of picking the beats, who's kind of help A and R in it, and like would you guys say it is like a which region sonically is winning, the Bay or L A on the album? It, we had to have a balance. Yes, it a had balance. to come from different ways. So you listen to if you heard the album, you listen to the song, have a nice day, uh, fuck you song. It's definitely that's definitely like Dr. Dre influence produced by Fred Reck. It's, Shout out to Fred Reck. Uh, Lace you up, definitely like SoCal all day. Activated. Activated, nice. You know it's it's on there, and then you know you got songs that are on the extreme other spectrum of like uh, free game and and and. Yeah, the, the ba- ba- bass line. I mean, the so, two big records is the strip. Baby, shout out to Pilo. That's my bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, if you leave the state of California, we're here. If you leave here, they, their ears just hear West Coast. They For don't sure. hear. For they sure. don't hear that no. little distinct You're difference right. that a Bay Area person and an LA person would hear in a song. And I think that uh, the West Coast, when you get us all in the same room, we stand up together. We always mm-hmm. have. You you put. Uh, Warren G and DJ Quick in the room with we all we, we West for Coast sure. we California boys we like right. we ride together like for real. It's just for not real. on basketball, obviously. Right? Uh, you know, it's sports and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. you gotta you gotta have your, your, your team. We're all riding with the big three, but when it comes to like you know the professional teams, like yeah. That. But we definitely mm-hmm. uh, feed off each other. Off the Bay in the Bay, we got a lot of Dr. Dre isms in Bay Area music. We got a lot from Dre. You know what I'm saying? Uh, recently, I think um, you know producers like. Um, like like mustard, he kind of like you know grabbed a little bit of that Bay energy and interpreted oh, his way. Of course, certainly. we don't got a, a gang of lingo from the Bay. Yeah, but you yeah, know, you know what it, saying? for sure. So it's like it's just we we are one, but like he said, we like cousins, and right. we, we, there is no feud. Don't I? I have not seen the feud or the competition. Right. Who could come with the hottest records? We really and our young rappers. When you get the the G Easies and all them come out, they hanging out with the Kendricks. It ain't no. Mm-hmm. It ain't no animosity. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't heard of no animosity I, ever and out of my whole history. Every era when the game came uh, out, the that's Bay the homie. in L.A. It's we never were, been. Have uh, you guys, I was gonna say, have you guys had the bip and talk with Snoop and Cube about when you guys go do promo in the Bay? Like, don't leave nothing in the car. Leave your window. They know the it. They already know because they, they. Besides us, Cube and Snoop, they got Bay Area fam too. That bip we all, shit is we lit all, right we now. all locked in. We all. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. You no, know Warren G got real blood cousins in the Bay. In the yeah. Ville, from the Ville, Oakland. in Oakland, yeah. So we got a lot of that going on, man. Yeah. I, got, I, I, I was born I got cousins. I got cousins in Englewood. Like, yeah. I got cousins all over the place. I was like, born on Sunset Boulevard, man. That's crazy. So I got a whole million first cousins in L.A. Not only are you guys obviously historical artists, 
great discographies. Uh, but you guys are all moguls within your own right. And like, I mean, some of the biggest moguls in music. Snoop Dogg is killing the crypto space. He's just killing everything. He bought that for a bunch of movies too. Yeah, he on his movie stuff. So. Speaking of movies, Cube Vision. Speaking of locked in all of the liquor we're drinking. Speaking of the big three, the goon with the spoon ice cream. Come on, man. Uh, what is you guys? Are you guys like passing ideas around in terms of just like business opportunities and shit? Because I do feel like, you know, there's there's this. It's kind of a very unicorn situation to not only have historical artists but historical businessmen in a group together. Without a doubt, you know, we uh we started, you know, not just a group. We got a Mount Westmore LLC, so it's a business. And, you know, we funnel great ideas into the business. You know, when it's when it's right, we let everybody know this is something that we should all attack that as a group, um, and do it. Um But I know we I know we all involved in investment groups. Uh I, I get the hint hint we should start the Mount Westmore investment group. Yeah, we'll DC. Let's do it. Take yeah. some Mount Westmore profits and put them in some businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real talk. Any uh, new uh, stuff coming from you, Forty? I feel like every other month there's like a new product I can eat or drink. So since the pandemic, I recorded over seventy songs. Mm -hmm. Since the, since I'm talking about since we finished the Mount Westmore album, because the grit don't quit. But anyway, yeah, I got a uh, rule of thumb coming. That's the, that? that's my there's two albums. Oh, rule of thumb. And I, and I talk to Cube, and I'm a team player. I don't like, know if it's possible for you to not drop a double album. <laughs> I know. Every time I 40 to... <laughs> drops, it's a double album, it's a triple album. It's, it's... I think you put an EP out during the pandemic, and I was surprised own? that you had an EP and not like a full project, right? Right, right. Yeah. yeah, no, no EPs no more. I did EPs when I was young, and I dropped one. I dropped one that I felt I needed to put out because it was on my heart. It was my real assignment. Before they were saying he understood the assignment, it was really my assignment. To drop it, uh, it was me as a little two-year-old kid, three-year-old kid, um, standing standing uh, in front of a garbage can. It was an EP, but it was it had some great songs on there, and it was. But rule of thumbs next. Rule, rule of thumb is next. Rule of thumb, two two albums, and I don't know if I'm gonna drop them exactly at the same time or a week apart, but slaps. Um, I got a couple more um, uh, features I need. I need one. I already told Mount Westmore I'm taking over this one song that I wanted, and they they agreed that I can have it. And so I'm slapping that on there. And then, um, I mean, it slaps. I got features. I got, and I'm on there holding my own. So You always have the features on lock. And yeah. you always tapped in with the younger generation for you. Always, always tapped in with the younger generation. Sure. You know, and, I, and I, I ain't no slacking in my Mac, and my lingo's up to par. I'm not trying to be young. I ain't trying to be old. I'm just trying to have a happy medium where I'm right there, and I'm gassing. And I'm ahead of my time. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to ask y'all, because you guys all have classic bodies of work solo. Uh, Cube, what is, if you had to, what is your your magnum opus of your discography? What's your favorite album in your discography? What do you think is the best? Obviously, America's Most Wanted got five mics in the source. Yeah. You got The Predator. You got Lethal Injection. I mean, we can go I, on. I would say Death Certificate Death is certificate. probably the one, mm. because it's, it's the most dynamic Um you know, I think that's a great record. Uh, Predator's a pretty good record. Laugh Now, Cry Later is a good one. But Death Certificate is probably the cream of the crop. What about for you, Short? Album? Best album. Probably the best two short album is probably getting it. Album number 10. That's my favorite. That's the... That's the um, Bang! Woo! That orange cover? That was one of my... Man, I had that, that shit when I was a kid. That I was album the is a production pocket. team that had been working together for like five albums. Shorty B, Ed Banks, Pee Wee, myself. We were the core of like a, a production team that made a lot of music. It was a cohesive and, sound. It was... And uh, before that, I my top seller was Life is Too Short. That's like classics that's like that's the only double platinum i had but me when i listen to the music and the production it's definitely getting it that's the i was gonna ask you because you also like over the years short like because you 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 guys have all been in this shit since the 80s right mm -hmm. but like it's crazy when you listen to life is too short and i can't imagine like the shit you were saying on some of them records well i used to have a technique where um I kind of still do it, but I had a technique where before I would like write songs, I would just write down the craziest stuff I could think of. 
And just like, you know, I guess it would be like sh- the shock value of Like a song like Cuss Words had to be like at the time, like, what the fuck? Or Blowjob yeah. Betty had to be like, people were like, what and, is going and on songs here? songs are like really long and there's like a lot of rapping. And like the there's hook, no hook on the, the, Yeah, the hook don't come like 48 yeah. bars. And some shit. Mm-hmm. You it's said just, Blowjob Betty's a true story? Yeah, I, I killed her. Oh, that's terrible. She choked on the sperm and died, but it was like so far back before social media and all that stuff. It didn't really get out there like that. <laughs> are you saying the statute of limitations has passed? I mean, it didn't. It doesn't exist. There's no victim. There's no case to it. There's, you'd have to go do some super forensics, man. 40, what's your best album? Because you I got a couple say, you could go with. There's a couple errors we could go with. Yeah, can I say, can I go by the, the errors? Yeah, of course. In the 90s, it was... <laughs> it's only one forty, man. Yeah, I couldn't go by here. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Pick one, bro. Okay, all pick right. One, pick one. Is it Overall, in a major way, or is it? You want me to tell you what my card? yo favorite you album? Come on, man. That's an easy answer. Cra- no, it ain't. No, it's not. I have you got two favorites. Say it then. Cube said two favorites. I got like. I got hella. Oh favorite. my god! Come on, man. I'm, you dealing with a dude that got more top two hundred Billboard. Don't album be, entries in the history of hip hop. Listen, don't, don't listen, don't listen, listen, <laughs> listen. Listen. Use your ears and let me, listen. Let me, let me answer for him. Let me answer for him. <laughs> His favorite E40 album is all the E40 albums. <laughs> give me one. Give me one. That's how long I've been. Want doing me give, you want me to tell you the one? You want me? You fin- I'm gonna tell you some Call shit. All the game, say album. It ain't it. Give me two of them. I'm gonna give you two. Okay, give me two. <laughs> in a major way. Okay. And. Element of Surprise. Ooh. Double yeah. album. Ooh. Yes, sir. Them the sickest albums I ever did. And and uh and don't not and not not excluding get a report card. What's your favorite album? In the two in the two thousands. What's your favorite album? That was cover? like an in a major way. I mean my favorite, favorite, favorite artwork of E4. You got some legendary art. Favorite artwork was one, in a major way artwork when I was in I, I was, you know, cooking Yola yep. in the gumbo pot, you know, mm-hmm. making soup. Between you, all of us <laughs> and Snoop Dogg included, we've got some watch. amazing album covers. Oh, for sure. The artwork has been amazing. <laughs> nah, for sure. You can just forget about the music and just the album covers are like legendary. A hundred percent. Yo, what up? It's Bootleg Kev. Got to interrupt the interview. Shout out to our good friends at Blue Chew. It is cuffing season. It's getting cold as a bitch outside right now. And uh, you could definitely use a little extra um, fellas. All right? Blue Chew will have your dick harder than goddamn trigonometry. All right? So if, if you're really, really, you know, trying to get your dick game right, trying to make sure your performance is at an all-time high, go to Blue Chew right now, bluechew.com, use the promo code bootleg. They're going to give you a month supply for free. That's right, a whole month for free. Bluechew.com, use that promo code bootleg, get your first month for free. My friend Adam Wade could use some Blue Chew, that's for sure. <laughs> there he is. So uh, this is what it is, man. It's got the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis in a chewable pill form. It gets delivered right to your doorstep in discreet packaging. You don't have to go to the doctor to get Blue Chew. It's all online, all right? And you can get your first month for free. Try it out and then thank me later. BlueChew.com, promo code bootleg. Plus, they just dropped the new Blue Chew Mint Chewable, which has the same active ingredients as Levitra. And that should have you fucking rocked up and socked up, bud. All right? So one more time, bluechew.com. Use that promo code bootleg. Get your first month for free. Let's get back to the interview. Uh, give me, You guys each give me a, a, a new young up-and-coming artist that y'all are fans of, that y'all respect, that you guys are actually listening to in, in your car when you're riding around, if any. Um, I would say uh, the boy Finesse. Finesse uh, two times on some pimping shit. He going crazy. His whole album uh. is about pimping. Is it? I interviewed him and he's like, I'm bringing the pimping shit back. Well, he's uh, it's gas that he the shit he's spitting is gas to I me. I played overall. him sugar free. Yeah, I'd rather give you my bitch during the interview yeah, because he never heard bitch. of sugar free and his whole his whole album is about pimping. So I was yeah. like, bro, let me play you something. Yeah, I like him. He he carrying himself well. He do, he doing a great job. Um, I got a couple of casts out of my area. Um, I like La Russell, not just because they from Vallejo. But I was in Vallejo, crazy. man. I was staying out, right outside the Crest. What? In that hotel is that in right? Hampton's Inn. Okay, yeah, for sure. She was active over there. That Seven yeah, Eleven yeah. is yeah. fucked. And Guap Dad. Yeah, and, and Guap, Guap Dad. Uh, I was. I would have to say it's a bunch of them, Simba's man. Uh, from the Bay. Uh-huh. It's you know. Um, Simba killed him with the freestyle. You got Simba. You got. Uh, you got. Uh, the boy Zay Bank. We got uh, Zay Bank. Zay you Bank. got uh, who else? You got. Um, 
What's my, you got Blast out of uh, Richmond. Uh, Yo, shout out to yeah. Too Short. Had my favorite line on the Pilo album. It's so many people. When you talk <laughs> about having a bitch make money off her pee hole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was riding on the Bay Bridge listening to the Pilo album, and I was like, that is the most classic 1989 Too Short shit to say in 2022. Come on. Hey, but, um, you know, um, we, I got so many people to say. But we got to, like, you know, like, Kendrick is another level of, like, what hip hop should be doing. Like, And he's like, never cease to amaze with his visuals, with his stage performance, yeah. and with his songs. Like, he's just prolific, period. So, he's he's on another... I, I'm proud of the West Coast for creating that guy. Yeah. What about you, Cube? Nobody. Nobody. I like that. I mean, shit, I respect it's that. True. I only fuck with... You know, when I'm making music, I only, I only listen to what I'm making. I respect that. Yeah. Because old... I don't want to be influenced by nobody. Yeah, little babies and shit. J Cole's the shit. It's a bunch of artists out there. I just all yeah, I want to do is just scream, and shout people out because I'm letting, letting them know I recognize them. It's a whole bunch of people I want to say, but I'm I can't money, be influenced. Money bag, money bag I, I can't be influenced because I'm me forty and there's no, I'm influencer. one of one. There's no one on this planet that's throw like a frisbee that rap in uh, calligraphy. <laughs> Have you heard the Mount Westmore album? I have not heard it yet. So when you listen, I mean, to I've the heard album. all the like the singles, you know, but I haven't heard the album. <laughs> it's crazy, man. When you listen to the give album, me a, give me your email address. I'll send you that. <laughs> when you listen to the album, it's gonna feel really good as you listen to it. But the one thing you will notice is that we're not pandering to the the new sound. We're Which not I'm so to happy be, you did not do that. We're, we're, try, just we're not trying to be something that we're not, and we're we're also. Imagine not, if I like, I would, if I got the Mount Westmore album and there was like some trapped out 74 BPM, I would be disgusted. But we're also not trying to be 1994 either. That's fair. Like we, we're in there where it's like this. I want to hear these guys sound like this right now. Yeah. Yo, between the three of y'all, I'm not sure there's an artist that you guys haven't worked with. Obviously, you've worked with Pac before. You've worked with Hove, Biggie. I yeah. mean, we go on and on. I mean, Cube, shit. I was just listening to uh, the grand finale on the Little oh, John shit. on the East Side Boys album, yeah. and I was like, I forgot Cube was on this shit when I was yeah. working out. Is there, for each of you guys, is there a feature that has not happened yet that just for whatever reason the planets didn't align and you didn't, you don't have a song with them yet? Um, Nas. Um, I would love to do a song with Nas. Nas and Cube is um, crazy. You know, Rock Kim. <laughs> I think everybody in they. Of MC course. Life want to do a song with with Rakim at some point. Um, you know, these are the OGs. I think I could do a good song with Buster. Yes. Uh, I mm -hmm. think me and him could do a dope song together. Um, you know, these are the ones that I, I think about uh, that I know we could probably do something crazy. For me, it was always a... Uh it's, it's just one answer. It was always like me, Missy, and Timberland on the same record. I, I wanted that. that hey, it's still possible. Yeah, that would have been the Ishnit. What about you, 40? Um, I would say uh, Jay-Z, Nas, uh, Q-Tip, um, Karis One, uh, Missy. Um, who else? I'd I love to do a song with Eminem. People you ever work with Trick my, Daddy? I love Trick Daddy. Mm -hmm. he's, he's ready, too. Yeah, Trick Daddy would have been a dope song. Yeah, and also, uh, and like I said, I wanted to just address the Eminem situation. A lot of his fans thought that I was dissing him. No, I can never do that. He's one of the greatest MCs that ever did it and got away with it. You understand me? He do his job, right? But I was they, somebody had asked me um, who would win in a versus mm -hmm. battle between Eminem and Busta Rhyme. And I said Busta Rhyme. But the versus is because versus is live animated and live performance. Presence. Yeah, that's all For I'm sure. saying. I wasn't knocking uh, Eminem. Wait, Buster's like Buster a top three a performer ever. He, and he hits. got a lot of hits. So, yeah. you know, he'd get the party going. But live, it's crazy. Like, yeah. live bust is like, it's like him, Tech Nine, and like, I don't know who That's else. all I, that's all I, I meant. And that's, a lot of sweat. Yeah. yeah, that's what I meant. I wasn't trying. I didn't right. diss him. I would never diss Eminem. He one of the greats, if not. I went to a Buster show, and he called me on stage and hugged me. I'm still mad. We, Why? You he guys just, a sweat hug. You just hug me. <laughs> his energy, his his, his energy is incredible. Dude. He's a great guy. Wet. He just drenched me. But I, got, I got a song with him. Too. Yeah, we had a great verses, they right? The best verses. Well, it was amazing. Thank Definitely you. the most fun. You were oh, fucking sloshed. I, I was on Mango Scotto, <laughs> Yo, drink, drinking out the bottle. Faded. Nobody has decided to have fun like we did. Nobody. <laughs> Yo, it, 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 it was my brother. Best. It was the funnest doing this with my brother, man. Everybody got this different energy. It was the funnest to watch. Uh, I really, really enjoy their verses. It feels like the verses but, thing's over, right? But did they ever approach you to do something? Yeah. But who, who was it against? 
Well, who were they proposing? Uh, I think they was talking LL at one point. Ooh. They was talking Scarface at one point. Um, you said no? I, yeah, I said no. I said no, too. I wouldn't you know, do it. I, I, versus is good, but my concept would have been, yo, I'm a fan. You do this off. You For, know what I mean? I, I want to enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, like... Okay, I get to have LL do my favorite LL songs, and he gonna have me do his favorite Ice Cube songs. Right, and it's not verses, but it's it's love. It's like that's what we do. Yo, do yeah. do this, and he do Rock the Bells, and he asks me, Yo, do Once Upon a Time in the Projects, and I do it. You know, it's like it, that's that would have been my concept. I can't go against. You know, people I admire. You know, LL's an OG to me, of um, course, in the game. Uh, so I can't see it. Me and Scarface, you know, um, I know they love each other. Me and Scarface love each other, but we don't we don't communicate enough to do a versus together. You well, when what they saying? when they did I don't theirs, want it to be competition. Right. It was love. I was like, oh, this is just gonna be two friends so just doing a do concert they, they, for us they, online. They had to talk me into it. I wouldn't right. do it. I refused to do it. We talked when verses first came out. Yeah. He's like, hey man, because we talk about all kind of stuff. He's just, like, would you do a versus? I'm like, no, nah, I would never do that. Like, I'm not, like, and, and 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 sort of what Cube is saying, my catalog is too, is too sacred to even like put it up for a debate on like a battle or like let me battle my catalog against you. Like, get out of here, man! Like, this, right. this is this is like a sacred Indian burial ground. Like, you can't walk on this. You can't put this up for competition. Yeah, I so I could be up there having one of my favorite MCs talking greasy and shit. You know what I'm saying? Just no. or if you just had to smash him, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to do because you got a that. lot of hits, <laughs> yeah. It's not, we, we agreed on it, we agreed on it, and it's gonna it be was a like, celebration, yeah. It's gonna be a celebration, so we just went up there and have fun. We were, we wasn't tripping, and that's and that's, that's what it felt like. Yeah. Snoop and DMX had a good spirit, they did. yeah, yeah. But you know, I, I then think it got you, crazy, you know, after that, you know, that like the locks, three six bone two, one got heavy, two short E40. My favorite was Gucci and Jeezy because I know the Atlanta history, that shit was crazy. That was dope. Oh, that was dope. I yeah. was just, you know, had that butter knife out cutting that tension in the air. It that was, was that was thick. I think Jada though was like the MVP of verses because he kind of like single handedly like he went savage. showed that's, everybody like, look, you got an MC because he underrated. Be and, oh, that's another person I want to do a song with. Jada Kiss. Jada Kiss. Jada Kiss. Never did a song with Kiss all J these years. Jada Kiss. I want to do a song with the Locks. Period. Name my folks. I'm like, it ain't nothing but love That's and respect. Easy. Every time we see boss, each too. other. Yeah, I want to yeah, do a song all, with him. And I respect too. them all. M. Yeah. Hey, what up, y'all? We got to stop the interview real quick to tell you about our folks at Hardeen Las Vegas. You see them right there. You know what I mean? Shout out to Hardeen, man. Shout out to everybody over there. It's the uh, illest dispensary in the world, number one. They got the craziest selection of weed you'll ever go to. When you're in Las Vegas, there's only one place to go. That's Hardeen. You pull up. You say, hey, I heard about this place on the Bootleg Head podcast, and they're going to get you hooked up with some fucking weed. All right? So go to Hardeen Las Vegas right now. If you're in the city of uh, Sin or you're going, make sure you, uh, you know, put it, put together a little hour off to the side to make sure you go get your nice fucking Hardeen bag full of uh, just a premium weed, all right? And not only that, you got to shoot them a follow, Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. I want to shout them out, though, because Hardeen smells the best. The dispensary is just, it's not only the best dispensary in the world, it's the best smelling dispensary in the world. And look, now the Bootleg Cat Podcast smells like Hardeen because I have the Hardeen signature scent candle. You could have one, too. You could. Go to fucking Hardy in Las Vegas. Just saying. Also, make sure you follow them online, Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. That is important. You have to follow them because there's some bullshit accounts out there. We appreciate Hardeen. When you're in Vegas, pull up. Go get you some smoke. Go get you some edibles. Go get you some fucking carts, whatever it is. They got it, and they got it at the highest quality. It's the only place I'm smoking from. That's Hardeen Las Vegas. Let's get back to the interview. Uh, Cube, uh, I saw I saw you talk about Big Three and uh, kind of Adam Silver's like lack of support. Yeah, um, he need to go. I saw you. Talk, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're obviously a big NBA fan. Historically, you've been one of the biggest Laker fans. Yes, sitting courtside all the yeah. years. Yeah. Um, well, I was in my suite. wasn't I, I wasn't uh, foot on the wood, but I was. Would you say your uh, lack of approval of a guy like Adam Silver has affected you watching the product as a fan? Of course, you know, understanding the things that they're doing to prevent the big three from growing, 
mainly uh, considering our league as competition, which is fucking ridiculous. We're three on three. We've been around six years. They're five on five. They've been around 76 years. Right. It's no competition. We're complementary. I agree. And, but labeling us competition prevents other NBA owners from investing. And if you even think you want to own an NBA team, you won't invest because this would disqualify you if you invest in a big three before you bought your NBA team. Wow. So it eliminates a lot of potential investors. They also are, you know, going to, to sponsors that they work with and telling them don't work with the, the big three. So it's a major issue. All he has to do is 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 not include the big three in that clause as as a comp competing league, and then we can work with a lot of the same people. Uh, but you know, this is a a, a black owned league. It has um, you know some of the greatest Hall of Famers that ever played involved in the league as coaches, you know, from Dr. J to Rick Barry to... Also, people who are actively involved Gary in, like, Payton. the NBA culture who commentated on TV and all that. all that. Yeah. So these are, you know, NBA legends who helped us form this league. NBA family. And, and for them to shit on it like that, I think uh, is very disrespectful. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. J, Iceman, Rick Barry... They didn't make a lot of money in the NBA, but the NBA made a lot of money off them. And for them to shit on a league that they're involved in, that's three on three, uh, to me shows that Adam Silver is out of touch. He was supposed to bring Ice Cube and say, I would love to be a part of it, and I want you to be the president of the G now League look, too. <laughs> we offered the NBA 10% of the league before we started. Mm -hmm. So we went in bearing gifts. Mm. He told told us uh, thank you, but no thank you, and then proceeded to fuck with us for these last six years. Well, it's crazy because it's the competition part is wild. It's like you guys are obviously uh, it's a different time of the year, right? Round three, and it's all it's all players who are known through the NBA, so it it just raises brand awareness for the NBA. More players that the NBA have overlooked. And, you know, they come and get our players and invite them. I mean, Joe Johnson they got signed him. off of his run in the Thank big three you. again. They invite them to the NBA camps. We have general managers coming to the game, owners. Everybody comes you to the You think David Stern would have embraced it? Might have been worse. I don't think so. But David Stern did like what we were doing, but he couldn't get involved because he's – you know, uh, ex commissioner, yeah, yeah ex commissioner with the NBA and Adam Silver's his and, guy. I, I, they just lawyers when it comes down to it, right? At the end of the day, they are just lawyers, and I think he's making a big mistake. And I think not uh, embracing a big three will be his downfall. Let me ask you this: because do you think it could take somebody like a Steph Curry or like a LeBron? to kind of step in and fully embrace a league like that to kind of change someone like Adam Silver's perspective on it? Maybe. You know, uh, LeBron has come to our games. You know, he went to the championship in uh, 2019. Um, Michael Jordan loves our league. Um, Shit, I, yeah, I'm surprised he ain't just say, give me one, I'll, I'll go one round with y'all. Nah, nah, just to I show y'all. I don't think he want to get out there. You know, I think that's done past. But, but for the most part, he loves the league. And, uh, you know, people like Adam told him not to work with us. And so it's just it's time for this dude to go because he's showing that he's not really down with the culture. Mm. What are the things you are are going to try to do to grow the big three? Um, put a better product on the court. Um, you know, take care of our sponsors. Um you know, be the best innovative new league that the world have seen. Um, and, you know, uh, get the fans what they pay for. You yeah. know, it's like just just do better. Mm. Uh, and, you know, try to, you know, get from under these grips that the NBA has us under because it is hurting us in uh, more ways than one. Yeah. Yeah, man. Shit.
I, 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 I was telling you, it's an entertaining product. For me, I'm like a basketball fanatic. So, like, I'm just like, shit, I could watch, uh, I don't know, Steven Jackson still play or whoever it is. You know, they, like, three games are fun. They're, they're fun. fun. They are. What's the uh, OG's name who had who changed his name and he was on the Nuggets? Uh, who's balling out for y'all? Uh, uh, he changed his name. He, remember, he was number one on the Nuggets back in the day, and he got in trouble because he changed his name to his Muslim name. Oh, uh, Mahmoud Abdul Rauf. Yeah, it's like dope to see him get buckets on like yes. y- way younger dudes because he exactly. had a bad shake in the NBA because of that. Yeah, you know what? What people don't realize about the Big Three is it's its own game. So just because you got loose in the NBA and you was the shit in the NBA don't mean you're going to come in the big three and get loose and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Just because people overlooked you in the NBA don't mean you can't come in the big three and make an impact. And that's what's been happening. You know, some dudes think it's easy, but in three on three, you have to have all skills. You right. can't have no weaknesses. You can't be a specialist. Mm. You can't be a three point specialist. And, and, and be effective in three on three. Hey, we got to stop the interview to tell you about our family at Odd Socks. That's right. The most comfortable socks in the motherfucking world. Go to oddsocksofficial.com right now. Use that promo code bootleg and you'll save 20% off. Christmas time is a coming. And let me tell you something. Their Black Friday sale. If you're watching this before Black Friday, you might be watching it after Black Friday. But if Black Friday hasn't came yet, just like Cyrus hasn't came yet. It's been a while. He's on a drought. Guess what? Oddsocksofficial.com, promo code bootleg, 20% off, plus whatever the fuck else is going on with their Black Friday sale. And let me tell you, they got some new licenses we got to talk about, boys. My particular favorites. One of the greatest shows of all time. They got the Beavis and Buttheads. You know what I mean? And this is really a big deal. The Big Lebowski. That's right. The greatest movie to ever exist. And shout out to all you rappers and people who be pouring your lean into this bullshit. Some Mountain Dew Baja Blast Socks. Casino. Great fucking movie. You know what I mean? These are pretty fly. Bubblicious. Yeah, that's right. A little bubblicious. And this is the big one. Big deal here. We got Coca-Cola socks, baby. That's right. Coke's on board. Coke is on board. You know what I mean? We get to put the Coke hat on. Well, this hat doesn't work for me, does it? It doesn't work for me. Anyway, you could get you this hat, though. Hey, Cyrus, take a Coke hat. There you go. Go to oddsocksofficial.com. Use the promo code BOOTLEG right now. Save 20% off and go purge their website for Black Friday. Get gifts for your family. Your fucking family will love you if you buy them the most comfortable socks in the world. It's that simple. Or you could buy them some fucking bullshit socks. You could go buy them some garbage-ass fucking Ethica or some bullshit-ass fucking Nike socks. Fuck them. Get odd socks. Let's get back to the interview. You uh, spoke recently about Warner Brothers having the rights to distribute the Friday series. Yeah. And that's obviously your intellectual property, right? You came up with that movie. Yeah. The most impactful movie of my entire life. I was talking like Smokey yeah. from like age eight <laughs> to twelve. My favorite. That's my favorite movie. One of my favorites. Of I know all that time. entire movie by heart. Like mm-hmm. it's it's bad. Like I could recite it when I watch it. <laughs> I watched it so much as a kid. By the way, top three soundtrack ever too. Oh yeah, it's dope. Yeah, one of the best soundtracks ever. Um, is would you say because you know you're somebody who's been revolutionary in so many ways? Um, is is that a like? What lessons did you learn from the Friday series and not retaining ownership or not necessarily being, you know, in charge of the the destination of where it goes? When you're doing movies now, is that something that's front of the mind? You know, like if you... No, it's part of the game. You know, when you do a movie, you have to get it distributed. And if you want your movie to be um, taken, you know, as, you know, high-level entertainment... Uh, there's only a few houses and studios that can deliver that. Uh, So at the time, we didn't have, you know, it wasn't no streaming services. It wasn't no internet. Hulu. So we had to assign the movie to New Line to distribute it. Mm -hmm. And New Line is connected with Warner Brothers. So, um, you know, sometimes when you do one movie with a company, they have the rights to release the sequels. That's part of the deal. Mm. And that's the clause that we're caught in. You know, they have the right to release the sequels. And so 
the way to stalemate is to not release, you know, to do a few and stop. And that's what they did. They did three and they stopped. Um, and we've been asking them to get the movie back. Here's why they won't get a movie back. Ride along straight out of Compton. New Line had both of those movies. They told me both of those movies would not work on a major scale. We took those movies out of Warner Brothers, took them to Universal. You know, so they worked. $150 <laughs> million dollars yeah. from, from Ride Along, $200 million from Straight Out, 250 from Straight Out Compton. Mm -hmm. So we really embarrassed, embarrassed them. So they was like, man, you, you really embarrassed us on that. You know what I mean? Like, damn. Uh, so we was like, man, y'all don't believe in us, so give us the shit back. And they like, we can't give you another movie back because I'll get fired, you know. So it was on that tip. You know, they didn't want to be embarrassed, so they didn't want to let Friday. Go. Yeah, I, as a fan, I was I always just assumed Chris Tucker was just not wanting to do it. Because after the third one, it was like, okay, if they do a fourth, Smokey got to come back. Yeah. And obviously, rest in peace to John Witherspoon. Yeah. Um, Tiny Lister. Tiny Lister passed AJ it. Johnson. There's some... Right. Very big parts of that universe that have passed. Yeah, man, and that's why I hate you, Warner Brothers, because they they let that happen. We could have shot those movies way before those guys passed away. Um, I'll never forgive Toby Emmerich mm. and the guys that was running the show at the time. Phase on love because they shot the uh, You know they let guys pass away who was counting on this movie. Mm. Uh. Yeah, and that universe like fed fed a lot of like, dude. I remember you would just go to like the Monster Dub show, and Tiny Lister would be just there with his bike, yeah, <laughs> taking pics. Like, you know, I think it was the most his most recognizable character. Oh, of course, so, one of the most recognizable characters ever. He yeah. embraced being called Debo for what? Yeah. Like, if you say like, you know, that's not his name, but you. Like, I feel like that's also like a like a people uh, call people call you Craig. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> it's like a verb. You could be like, yo, I Deboed yeah, him. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like. Yeah. <laughs> You, Not Ice Cube. Wait, who called him Craig? His my son. youngest son. He came, he came to the house, and my little, my youngest son. He's twenty eight now. He's a little boy. He just Craig. <laughs> I mean, Craig or Nick from uh, Are We There Yet? Oh man, well, look, man, that's how young you are. Okay, yeah. Mount Westmore, the album. Uh, it comes out Friday. Um, I'm very excited. This is. I'm so glad you guys put this together. I'm so yeah. glad it's actually coming out. Cause yeah. I really I didn't believe it was gonna happen until y'all did the Triller shit, and then that song came out and, it, and then it was quiet, and I was like, ah, oh, at least we got one record, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, now you could like not believe that the second album is coming out. <laughs> <laughs> so there is plans to do a second album. Yeah, it's oh, already done. We three. did like fifty we did. songs, man. You know, fifty? Are, is this all happening at the compound, the Snoop it's, spot? Like where you guys recording this together? We did it all we over. Our own studio, so and we might add a few more new ones of to it. We are. You know what I mean? Because we we in we in that mode. It's easy. It's so simple. I can tell you personally. <laughs> you know, second album is dope as fuck. It's, it's hard. Slaps. It's hard for us to make a bad record together. I mean, I mean you got us. I would hope, yeah, of course. Three, so we got to kind of work hard to make a bad record. Did you guys try to kick the Dr. Dre tree to get a beat or something? Like one of those millions of detox songs that he didn't uh, doesn't ever <laughs> nah. plan on releasing. I think I think Dr. Dre is. The greatest producer in hip hop of all time. One of them, for sure. I think sometimes we can overthink. You know, you know when we play dominoes, we play. We say steady, wrong, steady, long, steady, wrong. When you when you take too long to play your domino. Right. I'm not saying he's steady wrong. It's just he's a perfectionist. And I Dre's I, on the album. He he is on there. He, he, he intros <laughs> he intros one of the songs. Yeah, he's, yeah, he well, does. That's, well, that's all that matters. But we, 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 I think we're gonna get a song out of Dre. I think he's just we're gonna, gonna get a few. We love Dre. I you know, it. is he, the only song. Well, I mean, you know what? I, I was gonna say I forgot about like you, but I I think I, in like peak like '90s hip hop, like it was was it only Natural Born Killers that y'all did together? Like after NWA happened. Natural Born Killers, we did. Uh, that, was that the and, and w, w, we did Hello? No, no, Chin, Chin Check, Chin, Chin Check, of course. Chin Check and Hello. Sure. What about the new NWA? Hello was a slap. Uh, uh, Hello song with that was started this gangsta Chin shit. Uh, that shit was hard. Yo, what's yeah? How close were y'all to doing the fucking new NWA with Snoop? Was that like how? Where are those songs at? Not close at all. He's like, you heard the songs? They came what out. It is. We were about to get into it, and then he he met Eminem, and then he met. He met a uh, fifty, and it was like because Chin you know, Check was fire. Yeah, uh -huh. he met he met those two dudes, and that just 
took his attention. Uh, I mean, listen, Dre is a genius. We, we hopefully we get something. We'll get something him. out of him. Well, the album you know, he's he's been sending me a lot of. Music, he was an early so. on Mount Westmore supporter. He got mm-hmm. caught wind of the project early through Snoop. He pulled up to Snoop Studio. He put a stamp of approval on it. He jumped on the song. We got a song with him, but it's not. On, it didn't make this album. I'll be on the second album. And then um, the rivalry within the crew. Uh, obviously, fuck the NBA, but you know. Uh, Warriors, Lakers, right? All sports. Yeah. Warriors is new money. 49ers, Raiders. Lakers is old money. Mm. Our biggest argument with with, our our debate. Giants. Yeah, Dodgers and Giants, and then. The Raiders and 49ers. We can't agree on that. We don't. Sports. We don't be messing. We don't be tripping on Lakers and and the Warriors, because we know the Warriors is you know just it. You know. <laughs> so we don't even be tripping. Then y'all do got rings. Y'all do got the most. Y'all definitely got all the rings. Y'all definitely do. Yeah. Yeah. So we just we. Jimmy G's out. It's all. Niners are fucked. Y'all are done. You think we're done, fam? I mean, you guys are making the Super Bowl. Who, who, we got, you, you don't who think so? going to win? You just got to let, 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 let the chips fall where they live. Who do you think is going to win the game New Year's Day? Raiders play the 49ers in Vegas. Ooh. Who are you putting your money on? If the water's in the building, no, the 49ers no, is going to no win. No Jimmy G. Who are you putting your money on? I don't know about that Purdy. Are they going to sign Baker Mayfield? I don't know. We're going to see. No, they so you don't, what, what you don't know well, about Purdy? Y'all wouldn't pick somebody up from the— Yes, we did. Who, Josh. We, we Josh. got him. He, we got Josh. Yeah, the homies on the hood, yeah. Yeah, we got him too. We good. We're we're not worried about anything. We, we are running game. Ain't no need to explain. You're not worried on the Because we surface. got running game. You're not worried and we got outside. defense. Well, defense wins games. Ain't no need to explain. You're, you're, we got running you're game. you on the table, man. It's, going, it's bleeding through the microphone. Are you, a Ra- are you a Raider fan, Cube? Hell yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Well, I mean, you know. This is Ice Cube, the president of Raider Nation. Yes, I'm the president. What for? What What for? The Raiders can go one. The Raiders can go one and 16 through the whole year. You understand me? Through the whole year. Have you guys been to a Rams game in LA? It's really sad. Listen to me. I need you to hear me on this. I'm supposed to go Thursday. I need you to hear this. I need you to hear this. Yeah, exactly. I need you to hear this. Okay, I'm listening. The Raiders, look. I, I don't hate the Raiders. This the fans. I don't hate the fans. Hey, Earl, Earl, it's a certain. It's, it's L.A. radio. I know. I love well, this. The L.A. radio. We're trying, we're trying they to, they we're trying to sell some records. Let bro. me talk. Let me talk. <laughs> they, they they've supported me more just as much as the Bay Area, if not. So it's not about that. It's nothing. About, it's nothing the against too. y'all. It's nothing. Against, you wearing silver and black, man. Stop Listen. Talking. Why you bring up sports? Why are you talking over me? Because well, this guy's always talking his shit. I'm a fucking Cardinal fan. He's a Niner fan. We're in the same division. I hate the fucking 49ers. Let me just say this. Don't say let it. Me just, let me say this. The Raider the fans. Okay. <laughs> It could be. They could be. Boo. The Raiders. The Raiders do great. I like. Boo. They. They be. They be booing their own quarterback car. I I'm like, why are you? Be, man, why are you booing man, the beloved car? <laughs> See, they get <laughs> upset. And the Niners love Jimmy G. Jimmy G. Y'all love him. We love. Yeah. Him. We, 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 we love all, all our first people. Round picks for fucking Trey Lance. Listen, for listen, God, listen. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna wrap this up. See, that's why. That's why we're gonna win this whole thing. But listen, let me say this. This is the this is the, this, this is the common denominator of my whole thing. From this is the whole reason I got on the microphone. Okay, go ahead, get it out. The the Raider fans, the, they, look, it could, they, the Raiders could be one and the Raiders could be one and sixteen. You drunk? Stop drinking my wine. One sixteen. The Raiders could go one and sixteen and be like Raider Nation. One and sixteen, bro. Like they won the yeah. fucking Super Bowl. It's all good, man. Hey, look, most overrated dynasty of all time, the Warriors. Appreciate you guys coming. Hey. Really? Hey, who's your, who is your team? Who's I'm your a team? Suns fan. Don't worry about me. Oh yeah, stop it, man. Mount Cut Westmore. It out. Yeah, yeah. Go run that shit up. <laughs> hey, go by. Hey, I love y'all, LA. I love y'all. Thank you for everything. <laughs>